Probably everyone has their own rough definition of what a dialect is, that languages are usually rather distinct from each other and pretty much every language has a couple of dialects that are generally relatively similar to each other. Basically that two languages should be more distinct from each other than two dialects. Well. Like with most things, the definitions and borders are not very clear cut actually even from very blurry to almost non-existent. In the end, often enough it just comes down to a question of official status rather than linguistic criteria. But today I'm not here to argue whether something should be considered a language or not. Instead, I just want to show you how blurry these borders can sometimes be with an example of my own native language German. German, at least what is officially considered to be German, is one of the most dominant languages in Europe and has about 100 million native speakers, most of which live in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, but also smaller numbers in countries like Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, Belgium, Italy and more. Notable about the German language is its great number of dialects, which is, as you would guess from what I said earlier, somewhere from very hard to impossible to count. This map, for example, lists 53 dialects in the area of Germany and the other countries that I just named, but also including the Netherlands, and this is where it gets interesting. As most of you probably know, Dutch counts as a separate language, spoken by about 25 million people, mostly in the Netherlands and Belgium. However, the Dutch dialects are part of a dialect continuum with the German ones, which means that two dialects from neighboring places are usually always very similar to each other, while two dialects from two different ends of the continuum are much more different from each other, until they are hard or in some cases even pretty much impossible to be mutually intelligible. A famous example for that other end of the dialect continuum is Swiss German, or rather the Alemannic dialects grouped as such. With about two thirds of the Swiss population, the other official languages are French, Italian and Romance, three Romance languages descended from Latin, Swiss German is spoken by about 5 million people. It has a reputation of being very hard to understand for Germans, especially for those from the northern part of Germany. So hard that Swiss German speaking people talking on German television often get subtitled. Now what if I tell you that Swiss German, which counts as a dialect or rather a group of dialects of German, is more distinct from the German standard language than the officially distinct language of Dutch? To be fair, I won't go as far as to really mean that claim, at least not for the whole of these varieties, mostly because an in-depth examination of every aspect would go beyond the scope of this video and the situation might look different depending on which aspect of the varieties you're looking at. But I do want to go as far as to examine that claim looking at major aspects of grammar. During my research I have found at least 8 points where standard Dutch and Swiss German grammar are different from each other and I will compare them to standard German to determine which one of the two varieties is closer than the other. As a note, due to the lack of a Swiss German standard variety, I am using the dialect from the area of Bern as an orientation. Let's go! Number 1. Grammatical gender. In all three varieties, Dutch, Swiss German and standard German, there is grammatical gender, meaning that every noun has a certain gender assigned to it which means, for example, that it takes different articles or adjective forms depending on it. In standard German there are three different genders, masculine, feminine and neuter. I will demonstrate them by using the examples der Tag, the day, for masculine, die Mutter, the mother, for feminine and das Haus, the house, for neuter gender. Swiss German has the same three genders. Der Tag is masculine, Mutter is feminine and Zus is neuter. Dutch, however, has only two genders. These are called common and neuter. And you could say that common gender combines the masculine and feminine gender from German into one. Taking our examples, we have the common nouns de dag and de moeder and the neuter noun het huis. Number 2. Dative case. All three varieties have some kinds of a case system. Cases show the role that a word or a phrase plays in a sentence and what relation it has to the other words and phrases in the sentence. Even English has some traces of cases. For example, the pronoun they in the sentence they touch the wall is in the nominative case. But as soon as I touch them, the form of they changes to the accusative case or direct object because now they are being touched and not performing the act of touching anymore. English also has a genitive case in form of the apostrophe s that gets attached to nouns and names to show relations like possession or origin in phrases like John's house. A case that English doesn't have, or at least that it doesn't have distinct word forms for, is the dative case or the indirect object. The dative case is mostly used for relations of reception, like for example when giving something to someone, 
that someone, the recipient, would be in the dative case. Standard German has a dative case and Swiss German does too. For example, in the Swiss German sentence Ich bin ihm noch Frank geschuldig, literally I am him still a Frank owing, meaning I still owe him a Frank, the word ihm is the dative form of the pronoun er, meaning he. The German translation Ich bin ihm noch einen Franken schuldig has the same word order and also the pronoun ihm in the dative case. If we translate the sentence into Dutch, however, Ich ben hem noch ein Frank schuldig, the form of the pronoun hem is the same as it would be in the accusative case, since Dutch, like English, does not have a separate dative case. As a comparison, the accusative form of he in German would be ihn and in Swiss German ne or ihn. It still might look like Swiss German grammar is closer to standard German than Dutch, but now we come to the aspects where it is the other way around. Number 3. Simple past tense. In standard German there are three different ways to talk about the past, for all of which there are equivalents in English. There is the simple past, or also called preterite tense, which consists of just the verb in its preterite form, like for example ich las, I read, and then there is the perfect tense, which consists of the perfect participle preceded by a form of to have or to be, depending on the type of verb, as an auxiliary verb, like ich habe gelesen. I have read. The third way we will be covering in the next part. Dutch also has these two ways, ik las and ik heb gelezen. Swiss German however lacks the preterite or simple past tense and only has a perfect tense, ich habe gelesen. Number 4. Past perfect tense. If we want to talk about things that happened before another event in the past, both in standard German and English we use the past perfect tense or also called pluperfect. This tense consists again of the perfect participle and the auxiliary to have or to be like in the perfect tense, but this time with the auxiliary verb in its preterite form, again similar to English, er hatte es gehört, he had heard it, or literally he had it heard. Again Dutch also has this tense, he hat het gehoord. Now Swiss German cannot do that because it doesn't have a preterite tense. What it does instead is just adding another perfect participle, but this time of the auxiliary verb to the end of the perfect tense. Er hat's gehört ka. Literally, he has it heard had. This form is called a double perfect and it can also be used to just put more emphasis on the fact that the event happened in the past. Number 5. Future tense. To talk about the future, both in German and English we again use an auxiliary verb. In German it is the verb werden, followed by an infinitive. Komme ich nicht heute, so werde ich morgen kommen. If I don't come today, so I will come tomorrow. Or literally, come I not today, so will I tomorrow come. Similarly in Dutch, here we use either zullen or gaan as an auxiliary verb. Als ich vandaag niet kom, dus ik zal morgen komen. Literally, if I today not come, so I will tomorrow come. Swiss German, however, does not use an auxiliary verb to talk about the future. Instead, it uses the adverb de, meaning then. Rumen i nit hüt, so rumen i de morn. Literally, come I not today, so come I then tomorrow. Number 6. Doubled verbs. Swiss German does something very interesting when certain verbs are followed by another infinitive. It doubles the verb with another infinitive, like in the phrase come eat, rum esse. Literally, come imperative, come infinitive, eat infinitive. Standard German and Dutch don't do that. There it's come essen and come eten respectively, just like in English. Number 7. Relative pronouns. With relative clauses, we add further information to a phrase in a sentence. We start this clause with a relative pronoun that refers to the phrase we are talking about. Like in the phrase, the woman whom I liked so much. In this case, whom is the relative pronoun which refers to the woman and whom I liked so much is the relative clause giving further information about her. In German, relative pronouns usually agree with the phrase that is being referred to in gender and number. Compare die Frau, die mir so gut gefallen hat, literally the woman whom me so well pleased has, to das Städtchen, das mir immer das Liebste war, the town that has always been my favorite, or literally the town that me always the dearest was. 
In the first example, die Frau and die agree in singular number and feminine gender, while in the second example, das Städtchen and das agree in singular number and neuter gender. Similarly with Dutch in de Frau die me so goed heeft bevallen, literally the woman whom me so well has pleased, and het stadje dat altijd mijn favoriet was, literally the town that always my favorite was. In Swiss German however we only have one relative pronoun, wo, meaning where. Unlike the others it doesn't agree with the phrase which it refers to. Die Frau wo mir so gut gefallen hat, literally the woman where me so well pleased has, versus Städtli wo mir gängts liebste isch gsi, literally the town where me always the dearest is been. Number 8. Resumptive pronouns. For the last point we stay with the relative clauses. As a way of compensating for the lack of agreement of the relative pronoun, in Swiss German there are resumptive pronouns. In der Freund wo ni immer mit dem go go suche, literally the friend where I always with him go go drink, meaning the friend whom I always go drinking with, the resumptive pronoun or rather phrase mit dem agrees with der Freund in singular number and masculine gender. German and Dutch don't have such resumptive pronouns. Compare with der Freund mit dem ich immer saufen gehe, literally the friend with whom I always drink go and de Freund mit wie ich altijd iets ga drinke, literally the friend with whom I always something go drink. And that wraps it up. I found a lot more aspects where Swiss German grammar differs more from standard German than where Dutch does. Of course, as I said, there is still a lot more to be explored until we can really claim whether Swiss German is more distinct from standard German than Dutch, but what do you think of this dive into the grammatical situation? Do you have any questions about this topic? Do you think it's fair to call Swiss German a dialect in Dutch a language? Do you know any other languages where its dialects seem to be more distinct from each other than from a different language and to speakers of either German, Swiss German or Dutch? Do you know of any other aspects where these languages might differ from each other? I'm looking forward to reading your opinions in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe and the bell icon to get notified as soon as a new video comes out. And please share it with others who might like it to help this channel grow. Thanks for watching and until next time. Do you know of any other aspects where these languages might differ from each other? I'm lick I'm lick I'm licking.